All right, greetings, 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 and shalom, shalom to each and every one of you on tonight. Amen. Give me one second. We want to make sure that we get our phone put on silent. Amen. So we can uh, not be distracted by anything tonight as the holy and the powerful mighty word of Father Yah come out on tonight. We greet everybody tonight in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahshua HaMashiach, that's whom the world called Jesus Christ. We're thankful for the Father, amen, the one true Elohim, Father Yahuwah, Father Yah of Israel. We're grateful for him for his keeping power. Amen. His ability to keep us all throughout this wonderful and blessed day. Amen. We are thankful for him uh, giving us an early rising this morning and starting us on our way, keeping us and watching over us throughout the entire day. And now we're here at another Tuesday night trumpet sound and scripture study. Amen. Where we can come and get into the word of the Father. We can hit your heart. Amen. With the word of God. And you know, beloved, it's free of charge. Praise the Most High God. Again, we're ever so grateful for uh, Yahshua coming down through the 40 and two generations. Amen. To come to see about, amen, the sins of mankind. Amen and amen again. We remember our dear sister Miriam, amen, who anointed the head and the body of Yahshua, preparing him to go to the cross for your wicked sins, my wicked sins, and then the wicked sins of the world. Praise the Father. We're thankful for him for just being good. Amen. He did not have to give us this day. He did not have to allow us to have activities of our limbs. Amen. He did not leave, did not have to leave his holy word. Amen. On record, praise the most high God. We need the word of the Father. Amen. You know, I've been saying it all throughout the day because it's been on in my spirit. Amen. We are, we are literally in the 12th hour, the 12th part, I, I should say. The Holy Scripture says, amen, in the book of uh, uh, Second Esther is over there. He said, he said the Father uh, broke time down into 12 parts, amen. And that was, that was when our people were in uh, the captivity under the Persians, amen, whom we know today, a.k.a. the Iranians, because they changed their name in 1937, amen, and went on the world stage and told the world not to call us the Persians, no more, my God, but now call us, amen, the Iranians. So the Iranians had us in captivity. And while we was in that captivity, the Most High Father Yah, amen, was given marvelous, wonderful, blessed, and powerful revelation to who? Ezra, amen, the man of Yah, the servant of Yah, the prophet of Yah, <clears throat> and told him, amen, that there was 12 parts of time. Mm -hmm. And while we was down there in Persia, he said, he said it was already at the 10th and a half part. Now, can you just imagine, brother, sister, can you just imagine while we was in captivity, he said that the 10th and a half part had already gone past. That means that when we was in captivity, it was only one and a half part remaining. Are you listening? Of time. Yeah, of time. That's what we're talking about, time. Just like there are 12 tribes of Israel, the Father took time and carved it up into 12 parts. Huh? That's why he said 12 gates. Huh? 12 gates and 12 foundations gonna be on that kingdom. And the Father took time and carved it up, amen, into 12 parts. And so by the time Yeshua come on the earth, 2,000 years ago, Imagine now, now 2,000 more years ahead, we're not only in the last hours, no, the last days, I call it now the last hours, metaphorically, you know, metaphorically, amen, we can look into the scriptures and see what the prophets of old, what did the holy prophets say, how do we, how would we know that, that, uh, that we would literally be at the end, the signs of the end times, Sorry. amen, so what we have seen in the scriptures my God, just about everything has been fulfilled. And now everything is heating up on the world stage. Father Yah is dealing with the hearts of the wicked kings of the nations, stirring up their hearts. As the scripture says that Yah, amen, he touches the hearts of the kings. He has the power to turn their hearts in the way that he will have them to go. So he, he's stirring up the hearts of the kings and getting them ready, amen, and making ready for World War III, amen, so we, so we the Israelites, the Hebrew Israelites, who are we? Hebrew by blood, is that right? Mm -hmm. Israelite by nationality, 
and then African American by slavery. Amen. So we can get ourselves ready to get on out of here and get back on home where we come from. Huh? We come from we come from Israel. And the sand of the land misses the Israelites. And the Israelites that are now awakened. Amen. We miss home. We because we understand now that we have land. Don't you worry about it, brothers and sisters. <clears throat> If you don't have no land, if you didn't get the 40 acres and the mule here in the land of our captivity, we're going back home to get our land huh, of Israel. But watch this. Not only are we going to get the land of Israel, we're going to get the entire earth. Huh? I said the entire earth, brothers and sisters. You didn't know that we was going to get the entire earth? Nobody taught you and nobody told you that Yah, our Father, told us that he made the entire earth for our sakes? Huh? I bet you didn't learn that in Sunday school, did you? Huh? <laughs> amen. To God be the glory. Let's get that precept, man. Pull it out of there, man. Second Nestle chapter 6 over there. Hang and bang at verse number 59 and then to see what they got to say about it in chapter number 7, verse 10 and 11. Hey, before we get into what we want to get into tonight, praise the Most High God. Second Estrus, the sixth chapter of Second Estrus, hang and bang at verse number 59. Let's see if what I say is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help us God. Come on, brother DQ, the big Hebrew, what you got? In the book of Second Estrus, chapter 6 at verse 59. Yes, brother. If the world now be made for our sakes. Uh-oh. Pick it up at verse 58. Verse number 58. What did he say there? But we thy people. We thy people, the Israelites. Come on. Whom thou hast called thy firstborn. See, he called us his firstborn. What else did he call us? Thy only begotten. He called us his only begotten. And people got all tripped up over there. John uh, chapter 3, verse 16. Yah so loved the world that he gave his only, his only begotten son. Now, when he made that statement, he was talking about a people that have a king named Yahshua HaMashiach because Israel, amen, is the son of God. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Hold that there. Let's get that precept. Uh, go get me, brother. Uh, uh, Exodus chapter 4, verse number 22. Find out, is Israel a son? Read it out. In the book of Exodus, chapter 4, at verse 22. Uh huh. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh. What are you going to say? Thus saith the Lord. What is that? Israel is my son. Israel is what? Israel is my son. Israel is my son. Come Even on. my firstborn. Even my firstborn, which means the begotten. So, John 3 16, Yah so loved the world that he gave his only, his only begotten. Son, meaning Israel as a sacrificial people, and the king of Israel would be the sacrificial lamb that will go to the cross and die for the sins of that people. Are you listening? Huh? And then, then he would then go to the cross, be crucified, die, uh, be resurrected on the third day, uh, be seen amongst man for 40 days, and then ascend back to the right hand of the Father. Huh? But then Brother Paul teaches us in Romans 8.36 that Israel shall also be what? Israel shall be a sheep for the slaughter. Huh? That's right. So, so you see, Israel is a sacrificial nation of people. To go back over there, second Nestor chapter 6, pick it up at verse 58. Then we can understand it a little bit better. Come on, son. We thy people. Whom thou hast called thy firstborn. Whom thou hast called thy firstborn. Thy only begotten. Thy only begotten. And thy fervent lover. And thy fervent lover, read it out. Are given into their hands. Now we've been given into their hands. We've been given into the hands of the Egyptians. We've been given into the hands of the Assyrians. That's right. We've been given into the hands of Babylon. Right. Huh? We've been given into the hands of the Persians. We've been given into the hands of the Greeks. We've been given into the hands of the Romans, and now we've been given into the hands of the United States of America, who is Rome again, right. who is Babylon, great the, the heart it all over again, and who is uh what Egypt again? Mm -hmm. Been given into their hands. But what, brother? 
if the world be if the world now be made for our sake but see but if the world be made for israel sake, come on why do we not possess an inheritance with the world why don't we possess an inheritance with the world ezra asks a very good question is that right mm -hmm. okay then verse chapter 7 says what verse number uh, 10 and verse number 11 and I said, it is so, Lord. I said, it is so. Come on. Then the Lord said unto me. Who said it? The Lord Who said, said it? the Lord. Uh-oh, Father Yah. What you got to say about it, Father? Come on. Even so also is Israel's portion. Even also is Israel's portion. What's their portion? Because for their sake. Because for the Israelites' sake. I have made the world. Oh, my goodness. I have made the world. And see, you know, y'all just got to come on and leave them politicians alone. Stop begging them for reparations when the Father have promised us the entire world. Huh? He said, I give it to them for their possession. Come on, David, what you got to say about it? Get me Psalms chapter 2. Hang and bang right there, verse number 8 and verse number 9. In the book of Psalms, the second Psalm, verse number 8. Come on, son. Ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thy inheritance. See, we got an inheritance. We're going to get the heathen. We're going to inherit the Gentile nations who shall be hewers of wood and fetches of water. That's what the scripture said. Read it out. And I will give thee the heathen for thy inheritance. Yes, sir. And the uttermost parts of the earth and for the thy possession. And the uttermost parts of the earth for what? For thy possession. You see? For thy possession. So it's one spirit. Just one spirit speaking through Ezra, huh? One spirit speaking through David. Just one spirit speaking through John the Apostle. Salvation is of the Jews, huh? Everybody got to go through the Israelites because Israel was given up as a as a as a as a as an only begotten son, a nation that was given up, sacrificed. The branches were broken off, huh? That the wild mm -hmm. olive tree can, uh, by nature, can be grafted in. All right, tonight, brothers and sisters, we want to go ahead and get into. Um, matter of fact, let me have, let me, let me do some house maintenance. Uh, get me James the fifth chapter real quick, because we're going to talk about prayer. I'm going to start a teaching series uh, on prayer. Uh, but before we do that, I want to take care of a little house maintenance here. Um, uh, chapter five, and I want to get down to verse. Uh, give me a verse. Let's see what verse we want out of here. Uh, I want the verse that says, uh, the Lord of the, the Lord's Sabbath. Of, what verse is that? The Lord, James, the fifth chapter. Mm -hmm. uh, what the Lord of the Sabbath. It's not the Sabbath, it's Lord of the Sabbath. Oh, yeah, okay, verse 4 is what I want. Read that out, brother. We're in the book of James, chapter 5, at verse number 4. Now, understand, you go look at it later. James, chapter 1, verse number 1, let you know that he's talking to the Israelites. This whole epistle is given to the Israelites scattered uh, to the four corners of the earth. James, chapter 1, verse 1, you can read that on your own. James chapter 5, what does he say there? Pick it up at verse 1 and read it down into verse 4. Come on, son. The book of James chapter 5, verse 1. All right. Go to now, you rich men, uh -huh. we weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. you weep and howl, you rich men, for the misery that's going to come. This is a prophecy. It's prophetic. Read it out. Your riches are corrupted. See, your riches are corrupted because, see, somebody took us into slavery and made us work their fields for them with no pay. Read it out. And your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Yes. Your gold and silver is cankered. Your gold and silver, the money that you made off of slavery, uh, is it, it, going to be eaten up. In other words, it's going gonna, it's gonna to dissolve out of your hands mm. and then put back into the hands of my people. Read it out. And the rust of them shall be a witness against you. Okay, you see? The rust of it, of your gold and your silver, the money that you made, it's going to bear witness against you. Come on, son. And you shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Yeah, you're going to eat what? And you shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Now why are you saying you're going to eat your flesh as it was fire? Because at one time when we was in our land, they, 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 they uh, raised up bulwarks, meaning large walls 
around the gates, around the city. Jerusalem couldn't go nowhere. So they starved us out. And we was down to the point of eating our own children. So when the father comes, it's going to be the same thing. Because whatsoever man sow, he got to reap it, right? Okay, so that's what that's talking about. You're going to eat your own flesh now. Come on. You have heaped. You have heaped your treasure together for the last days. That's right. Behold, in verse number four. What did he say? The hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields. So the ones that you hired, you didn't really mean to say hired, meaning you had them working, doing labor, work in the field, sun up to sun down, working in the field, cotton field, tobacco field, sugar, huh? Cotton. Come on, son. The hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields. That's right. Which is of you kept back by fraud. See, now you kept back. You didn't pay them. You didn't pay them then. You don't want to give them reparations now. That's fraud. Because if a scripture says, hey amen, if it's in your power to give, huh? To give. Scripture says, oh, no man, nothing but to love him. But to love him. So we didn't get no money. We sure enough ain't getting no love. What did he say? And it was in your power, it was in your power, which is of you that kept back by fraud. Yes. That crieth. And the cries of them which have reaped. Now the cries that we cry and still cry to this day. Which have reaped. Which have reaped. Come on, we reaped the field. We sow and we reaped. Come on. Are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabbath. The Lord of Sabbath all. So, in and, and doing a little house maintenance, you know, I made a mistake. I made a mistake and I called it uh, a few teachers ago, a few scripture studies back, uh, maybe about a month or so ago, even maybe in up to two months. Uh, that right there, I called it the Lord of, Sa of the Sabbath, and it's not the Lord of the Sabbath, it's the Lord of Sabbath off. Sabbath off is the Hebrew word for Lord of hosts, Yahuwah of hosts. What is the host? The host is the military might and campaign of heaven. The military might and power of heaven through the angels. They are the hosts. And the Father, when they come, he's going to bring, amen, the military might and power that this world have never seen before. Never seen an army so great. You know, as, as powerful and great as the army is in these United States of America, and certainly they do have a great and a, you know, a pretty powerful army there. But uh, nothing this world has never seen an army such as what's coming, what the Father is going to bring. Because he is Lord of hosts, Yahuwah of hosts, or the Lord of, of Sabaoth. The Lord of hosts. So let me see if I can pull up a good precept right here. Uh, I want to go over to Revelation. I want, I want to show you real quick uh, the size of this army that's coming. What I want, what I want, what I want, what I want. What I want here. I need to find this precept to give you tonight so you can get an understanding of this military campaign that's going to come upon this earth. Uh, is that what I want? Revelation chapter 8. Revelation chapter 8. Well, you could go and get that right there. Revelation chapter 8. And let me, that's not what I want, but I want you to read Revelation chapter 8 and verse number 6. Revelation chapter 8 and verse number 6. In the book of Revelation chapter 8. At verse number six, and the seven angels which had the seven trumpets uh -huh. prepared themselves to sound. They prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded, uh -huh. and there followed hell and fire mingled with blood. Okay. And they were cast upon the earth. And then they were cast upon the earth. So these angels that's coming, I can't find this precept. Maybe I maybe it'll come to me in a minute. But I want you to know that the host that's coming is to the sum of about 200 million. Mm. 200 million 
And that just came across my mind as I'm sitting here. 200 million, I need to find this precept. Let me see if I can find it. 200 million. And the military might, the military might in power of the United States of America is only 2 million. <clears throat> Their military is to the size of 2 million, but the uh, military campaign that's going to come upon this world is, uh, is to the size of 200 million angels. Mm -hmm. And we know angels are, are stronger than men, y'all. It's 916. Yep, is I that just, what I want? Yeah, I Nine. That's what you're looking for. There we go, right there. I'm looking right at it three times. I just can't. Thank you, son. Revelation chapter 9, verse 16. That's why you got to have men of y'all around you that know the scriptures too. Come on, brother. In the book of Revelation, chapter 9, Pick and verse, it up number verse 15. 15. 15 through 17. What did he say? And the four angels were loose. The four angels, they were loose. Read it out. Which were prepared for an hour mm -hmm. and a day and a month. They were prepared for an hour. How long? For an hour and a day, yes, and a month, come on, and a year. That's right. For to slay the third part of men. Uh oh. Now, when they come, one third of mankind, he gonna kill them. These are the angels of vengeance that you read about in Ecclesiasticus, chapter thirty-nine. Matter of fact, grab that there real quick, son. Hold that. Hold that revelation there. Hold that there. Uh, Ecclesiasticus thirty-nine. Pick it up at verse 25 and see what we got there. In the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 39, at verse number... 25. What did that say? Verse number 25. Uh-huh. For, for the good are good things created for the beginning. Come on, verse 27. Verse 27. All these things are for good to the godly. Mm -hmm. So the sinners that are turned into evil. Yeah. Verse 28. What did it say there? There be spirits that are created for vengeance. That's what I want right there. There are spirits. These are angels. The Father created them to do one thing. They are the angels of vengeance. The Lord of hosts. Yahuwah Sabaoth. These are the angels of vengeance. Read it out, brother. There be spirits that are created for vengeance. Uh-huh. Which in their fury lay on sore strokes. Uh oh, in their fury, they come to put some hurting on somebody. These angels don't play, man. Come on, brother. In their fury, they lay on sore strokes. Yes, sir. In the time of destruction, in they the pour out their force. In the time of destruction, they gonna do what? They pour out their force. They pour out their force. Read it. And appease the wrath of him that made them. And they appease the wrath of Father Yahuwah that made them. Read it out. Fire. What they do? Fire. They, they, they utilize fire, these angels of vengeance. Come on. And hell. And they, and they, and hell. Let's see, when you look on the United States of America on the West Coast and them fires out there and they can't put them out. And they go through and destroy a whole community at one time. Australia, uh, he sent fire over there. That the fire burnt up nearly, I believe, about one third of the of, of the of the parcel of land oh of Australia at one time. My Lord. These are angels of vengeance. When you see these hurricanes out on the ocean and coming upon land, huh? Those are angels that are doing that. Mm -hmm. When you see the tornado drop down out the sky, you can't see them, but those are angels mm -hmm. of vengeance, huh? Angels of vengeance, they, what do you say about them, brother? There be spirits that are created for vengeance. Come on, now. Which in their theory lay on sore strokes. Read. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force mm -hmm. and appease the wrath of him that made them. And appease the wrath of them that made them. Read it out. Verse 29. Come on. They bring fire. They bring what? Fire. What else? And hell. Yes. And famine. And what? And famine. And famine. Come on, son. And death. And what? And death. And death. All these were created for vengeance. They were created for one purpose, to bring vengeance. This is why you hear the Lord say, the battle is not yours. Mm -hmm. huh? Vengeance is mine. Vengeance is mine. Huh? Right. Vengeance is mine. Yes, Lord. And, and, and he got angels I mean, that they, they created just to destroy, just to kill. This is why you hear Yeshua say, I kill. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 32, verse 39. I kill. I make alive. I wound. Mm -hmm. 
and I heal. And all you got to do is give a charge to these angels that wait patiently right. and sit there. They patient, but they're like, Lord, when you going to let us go? Because that's all they know is vengeance. That's, right. that's all they know. Hallelujah. It's vengeance. Oh, Lord, when you going to let us go do what we do? Mm. Huh? They patient, but Lord, please, come on. We, we Give us the call. We ready. Watch what he say. Read it out. Fire and hell and famine and death. Yes. All these were created for vengeance. Come on now. Verse 30. What did he say? Teeth of wild beasts. Uh-oh. Read, brother. And scorpions. Uh-huh. And serpents. Yes. And the sword punishing the wicked to destruction. And the sword punishing the wicked to destruction. Come on. Verse 31. Uh-huh. They shall rejoice in his commandments. what they say? And they shall rejoice in the most high commandments. They get happy to come bring this vengeance. To come bring this destruction. They shall rejoice when Father Yah give the command. Go kill. Mm -hmm. Go slay. Go destroy. Read it out. And they shall be ready upon earth when need is. And when their time is come, mm -hmm. they shall not transgress his word. They ain't going to turn back from that commandment. Mm -hmm. Huh? Then go back to where we were. Revelation chapter 9. Pick it up at verse 15. In the book of Revelation chapter 9 at verse number 15. He said what? And the four angels were loose, which were prepared for an hour. Prepared for an hour. Come and on. And a day. And, and a, a day. And a month. And a month. And a year. And a year. For to slay the third part of men. You see? I mean, who's going to do it? It's going to be the angels of vengeance. Huh? The angels of vengeance is going to bring this pain to the earth. These wicked, one third, going to be destroyed. Read it out. Verse 16. Mm -hmm. And the number of the army of the horsemen yeah. were 200,000 thousand. 200,000 thousand. And I heard the number of them. Now, 200,000 thousand, when you do the mathematics on it, come out to 200 million. I already did it. 200 million angels of vengeance. You think United States little B bombers, mm -hmm. that little F 16, mm -hmm. and that little stealth fighters gonna be something that can fight and rival up against the angels of vengeance? Somebody in big trouble. Mm -hmm. You in big trouble. Just you just in big trouble. Mm -hmm. Come on, brother. Verse number 17. He said what? And thus I saw the horses in the vision. Come on there. And them that sat on them. Yeah. Having blessed breastplates of fire. Bless bre a breastplate of fire. Mm -hmm. Come on, son. And of Jason. Mm -hmm. And brimstone. And brimstone. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions. Uh-huh. And out of their mouth issued fire and smoke of brimstone. See the Father got creatures, man, that we've never seen with our own two eyes before. Mm -hmm. He got all types of different creatures. Huh? Think about all them fish under the water, and you, and you look on the TV, and you see, like, man, that's an ugly looking thing. Mm -hmm. The Father got all types of creatures. So, yes, just doing a little house maintenance. It, it, over in James chapter 5, when it said, uh, Lord, it didn't say Lord of Sabbath. Of the Sabbath. Uh, I want to make a correction and bring correction to myself because whatever I say, and it got to be right. Let the Father hold me accountable. Amen. So if I'm wrong, I don't have a problem coming back and conceding my wrong and then making the correction. And then the Father is pleased with me. Praise the Most High God. All right, that's enough of that right there. I want to go into uh, a teaching series. We're going to begin and talk about prayer, y'all. We're going to talk about prayer. Amen. Uh, and certainly in these last days that we are in, uh, we need not only prayer, uh, but we need effective prayer. And we need as many people as possible to be able to get a prayer through, to say the least. Because some people are praying and they just are huffing and puffing and carrying on and crying out. And uh, to their sad regret, that prayer ain't going nowhere. It ain't going nowhere but to the roof because of the heat that comes from the breath and fall right back down. You know, uh, they taught us that heat rises. Hmm. And when heat rises, uh, take that prayer up right there and they go right back down because the Father does not hear the sinner. And he doesn't hear us in prayer uh, when we're in sin, to God be the glory. So. Uh, a couple of things we're going to be dealing with with regards to prayer, all right? So we're going to carve, carve this teaching up into about three or four uh, sessions. I'm going to try to get it done in three sessions. If not, we'll move it over to the fourth session. Uh, but what we're going to be dealing with is uh, first, 
uh, uh, we want to deal with the procedure of prayer. We're going to deal with the procedure of prayer, one. Uh, two, we're going to deal with uh, not only the procedure of prayer, I then want to deal with uh, the posture of prayer. I want to deal with the law and or the characteristics of prayer. And then fourthly, I want to deal with the direction of prayer. All right. So let's kick things off by going over everybody. Uh, please have your notes, uh, paper, pen, and you're going to need to take some notes and write this stuff down. Because certainly, beloved, as I said, we're in these last days and we need to be able to get prayers through. So we have to make adjustments to what we are doing uh, in our lives, how we are approaching prayer, uh, what we are saying in prayer. Amen. Sometimes can prohibit our prayer. So God everlasting be the glory. We lost the light, but that's all right. We'll keep on going. But so now uh, let's go to Hebrews, uh, the 16th chapter and uh, pick it up right there. brother. Hebrews, the 16th chapter. And let's see what we got. Not the 16th chapter, That's Hebrews chapter 4, I'm sorry. Hebrews chapter 4, and let's go over to uh, uh, verse number 16. Let's pick it up right there. In the book of Hebrews chapter 4 and verse number 16. See if, look, look in that bag, I say GMV. And look in the back, you're going to see a, a cable. Uh, you can plug it up? Yeah, plug it up. Okay. It's on the back side. In the book of Hebrews chapter 4 and verse number 16. Come on there. Let us, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. Let us come out. Boldly unto the throne of grace. Let us come boldly. My God, did you hear what the God of heaven and earth say? Let us come boldly. To the throne of grace. See, you only can come boldly to the throne of grace if you know you can get a prayer through. Because everybody that bow their knees cannot get a prayer through. <laughs> So we got to be able to come boldly before the throne of grace. Is that right? Come on, brother, read it out. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. Unto the throne of grace, come on. That we may obtain mercy. That we may obtain mercy. If there's no mercy, huh? we can't get a prayer through anyway. The Father has to extend the hand of mercy for us to be able to get a prayer through in the first place. All right? Now, let's certify something that we must... Make sure that we're in the correct mindset, or, 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 or when I say mindset, I mean the correct uh, uh, heart. He needs to be uh, right with the, with, with, in the sight of the Father. Because mm -hmm. when your heart is not right, you can't get a prayer through. Mm -hmm. When your heart is dusty with filth of sin and iniquity mm -hmm. and transgression against God Almighty, you're not getting your prayer through and neither am I. Okay, right. let's see what the Father got to say about it. Give me John, brother. John, the ninth chapter, and let's look at verse number 31. John chapter 9 and verse number 31. Come on. In the book of John chapter 9 at verse number 31. All right. Hit the switch, y'all. Hit the switch, brothers. You got to let it, let it go. In the book of John chapter 9, verse, verse 31. Other, switch, other way. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. There we go, right there. What did he say there, brother? Now we know that God heareth not sinners. Now why, now why men don't know that? They say they know the Father and walking with him. The apostle said, huh? Yeshua, because he was an apostle too, mm -hmm. pursuant to Hebrew chapter 3, verse 1. Mm -hmm. He said, we know what? That God heareth not sinners. See, he don't hear sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of God, yes. he, doeth the, he doeth his will, him he heareth. Him he heareth. Okay, now. So if we know that the Father doesn't hear the sinner, watch this, or the one that's in sin. Okay, let's find this out. Go get me uh, Isaiah chapter 59. Pick it up at verse number 1. Isaiah chapter 59 Verse number one, let's see what we got there. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 59, at verse number one. All right. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. The Most High hand, Father Yahuwah, his hand is not short. He said that he cannot save. Because he can save. He should be able to save. He's the God of salvation, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah, amen. He's the Elohim of salvation. Read it out. The Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Uh-huh. Neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. His ear is not heavy that it he can't hear. Who told you that? 
That is, it is heavy that he can't hear. Read it out, brother. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. What have happened? Your iniquities have separated between you and your God. It's the sin that prohibits your prayer from going to where it needs to go. Prohibit our prayers from taking flight, brothers and sisters, and going to the throne of the Father, at the base of the throne where them golden vials are, according to Revelation chapter 8, where them golden senses are, so the angels can collect them along with the prayers of the saints and the incense and lift them up to him. But if I'm in sin, gambling, if I'm lying, got to lie in my life, hmm? I done stole something. He's not hearing those prayers. It, listen, this God is so holy that he will never go back against his word for now one of us. That's right. His law is established. It's settled. It's done. See? Hold that there, son. Give me, thank you, Lord. Give me Psalms chapter 119, verse number 89. We got to get an understanding of this. Because when you in sin, don't tell me, man, I prayed and it happened just like I prayed. And I know I was in sin. I know I wasn't doing right. No, your prayer didn't go through. Uh-huh. Someone prayed for you. Had you on their mind. Hmm. Somebody took the time to pray for you. Yah, our father heard their prayer, but he don't hear our prayer if we're in sin. Huh? He will never hear it. Don't you hear Yeshua on the cross? My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Is that what he said? Why would he say, why have thou forsaken me? Because the sin of the world was on him. Mm -hmm. The sin, your sin, my sin, was upon him. That's why. So you see, the father hates sin, don't want nothing to do with it neither. Is that right? That's right. Come on, brother. What did he say there? In the book of Psalms 119 at verse number... 89. Verse number 89. All right. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Forever. Your word is settled in heaven. Is that right? Mm -hmm. It's settled. See? Don't matter what you say. Don't matter what I say. Huh? We must believe what's written. If you're in sin, you can't get a prayer through. If I'm in sin, I cannot, I shall not get a prayer through. Go back to Isaiah chapter 50, 59. Pick it up there at uh, verse uh, number one and read it out. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Uh -huh. Neither is his ear heavy that it cannot hear. Yes. But your iniquities have separated you between you and your God. Your iniquity brings a bridge, a separation between us and Father. Come on, son. And your sins have hid his face from you. Uh-oh. Now, when I'm in sin, I told you. What will he do? Hid his face from you. He'll turn his face from you. That he will not hear. That he will not hear. Mm -hmm. That's written here, and it's settled in heaven. Ain't nothing you can do about it. Ain't nothing I can do about it. The only thing we can do about it is repent and be holy. Mm -hmm. Then they're his. Is that right? So when we make mention of the procedure of prayer, the procedure of prayer, go get me Psalm 100. Write this down if you're taking notes. We must enter into his gates with thanksgiving. So the procedure of prayer is to enter into his gates with thanksgiving. You got go, you gotta go to him with a praise. Give them praise. Give them worship. In your prayer. When you start your prayer off, it ought to start off with a praise. Lord, we thank you. That's a praise. That's a sacrifice. You got to give them a sacrifice. Lord, we thank you. Lord, I bless you. Lord, I praise you. Father, I exalt you. What did he say, brother? Psalm 100, verse number 4 says what? Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and do what? And enter into his courts with praise. I told you. Be thankful unto him and that bless be his name. Be thankful unto him and do what to his and name? And bless his name. Now let's see what Yeshua got to say about it. Come on, son. Let's go to Matthew chapter 6. We're working on the procedure of prayer. So first thing, we got to come and give him, give him praise. Give him thanks. My God, you got to do it. 
This is the procedure of prayer. First thing is give them thanks. Give them praise. What do you say, son? In the book of Matthew, chapter 6, uh -huh. at verse number 9. nine. Come on, 9 after, to 13. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Uh-oh, now, now he going to teach us how to pray. Yeshua say, after this manner, this is how you pray. We got to learn how to pray. Because we want our prayers, remember, to be effective in these last days. If we don't understand the procedure of prayer, then we can't make we can't have our prayer to be effective because God not dealing with us if we're not if we are going around the procedure of prayer Pray that miss. is established in the holy text. Pray miss. Come on, son. Our Father which are in heaven. Our Father. So you, first of all, who are you talking to? Mm -hmm. Who are who who are you talking to? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm talking to God. What God? Mm -hmm. Our Father, Father Yah, which art in heaven. Because hmm? they just took, called it on Buddha, you, 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 you ain't your prayer ain't going through. Mm -hmm. Huh? Because you called it on the wrong God. Mm -hmm. Talking with a discussion, a fella, dis having a discussion with a fella today, talking about Allah. Brother, you ain't getting no prayer through talking to some Allah. Mm -hmm. Allah don't even have a begotten son. That's right. Hmm? Talking to who else? The Hindu God? Mm -mm. What do you say, brother? Precept. First Corinthians chapter eight and verse number six. Uh oh, here come a here come a smooth precept. What do he say? Verse five. For though there be called that 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 for though there be called that are gods, whether in heaven or earth, mm -hmm. as there be gods many and lords many. Yes. But to us there is one God, the Father, whom are who is in all and we all. See, the Romans called on. They had all everything was a god. They had a god for the wind. God for fire, God for the for agriculture, they had a sex fertility God. Mm -hmm. Zeus was their God. Why you think they call in the days Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday? Mm -hmm. Pagan gods. Mm -hmm. That came from Rome. That's right. Got you running around, me too, all of them talking about. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, all pagan gods mm -hmm. of Rome. Here come Israel, got one God. Mm -hmm. uh, one God. Hear you, o Israel, the Lord our Elohim. Yahuwah, our Elohim is one. That's it. Come on, son. Stay right there. Our Father, which art in heaven. Father Yah, who are. Which, where you at? Who, which are in heaven. Read it out. Hallowed be thy name. That's praise right there. See? That's praise right there. We're talking about the procedure of prayer. Don't be going to, don't be going to the Father. You ain't giving him no sacrifice. You got the call on him. Hallowed be that name. Father Yah. That's what Yeshua said. Huh? Hallowed. Praise, worship, glory, honor, thanksgiving. Unto that name. You got to submit unto him a sacrifice because to serve the Father is a form or a lifestyle of giving sacrifice unto him. In fact, prayer itself is a sacrifice. You didn't know that? They didn't know that. Mm. They didn't know that. My Lord. Let's see what the precept is. Hold that, son. Give me Psalm chapter 141. Hang and bang. I want verse number one and verse number two. Psalm 141. Verse 1 and verse 2 as a as a good precept tonight. Come on, brother. Lord, I, I cry unto thee, make haste unto me. What did David say? I cry unto thee, make haste unto me. I cry unto thee, Father Yah. Come on, and make haste to me. Come on. Give ear unto my voice when I cry unto See? thee. See, give ear unto my voice when I do what? When I cry unto when thee. When I cry unto you. Read it out. Let my prayer be set forth before thee. Uh oh, let my prayer be set forth. Before you, come on. As incense. As what? As incense. As incense. Then notice now that the incense when you light it has a very peculiar way that the smoke twirls upwardly. As incense, because the incense is a sacrifice of a sweet savor. That's why he's making mention of the incense, because it has a sweet aroma to it. Read it out. And the lifting of my, of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Uh oh. And the lifting up of my hands. As the evening sacrifice, I told you, 
And Yah said that let men everywhere pray doing what? Lifting up holy hands. Do you lift up holy hands when you're in prayer? Do you lift up holy hands in prayer? Uh, when you see us doing like this, we're lifting up holy hands. See? Hands right here, and then you can lift them right there. That's lifting holy hands mm -hmm. in prayer. Or you can lift them all the way up in prayer. Mm -hmm. See? So he says, read that out again, verse 1 and verse 2. Lord, I cry unto thee, make haste unto me. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Give ear unto my voice when I cry unto thee. Give ear unto my voice when I cry unto you. <clears throat> Read it. Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense. As incense, that's a sacrifice. Read. And the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. And the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. What verse is that? Verse 2? That was verse 2. Now get Romans, get Revelation chapter 8. Let's get another precept. Revelation chapter 8, uh, pick it up there, verse number 3 and verse number 4. See, prayer is a sacrifice. Come on, son. In the book of Revelation chapter 8 at verse number 3. And see, the son sent, excuse me, the father sent his son as a sacrifice. But why is it people so weak in prayer to return a sacrifice back to the father? Think on it. Where is your prayer life, brother, sister? Why is your prayer life so weak? I love God. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love God. <laughs> huh? That's what you say. I love God. But the only time God hears from you is when you need something. When your back up against the wall. Listen, that hard-headed, stiff-necked thing you. You won't even bless your food when you eat. Mm -hmm. You got to give a sacrifice of prayer to bless your food. Think on it, y'all. Just sit down and just won't even pray. Won't even give him a sacrifice of praise. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and coming into his courts with praise. And thanking him as a sacrifice along with your prayer just for the food that he supplies. Mm. We got to be careful these days. Got to be careful. Come on, son. In the book of Revelation, chapter 8 at verse 4. Come on, verse 3 and verse 4. And another angel came and stood at the altar, verse uh -huh. number 3, having a golden censer. Have, there it is. At the base of the throne of the Father, huh? there's an altar there. And on that altar, there's a golden censer. Come on, son, what's in that golden censer? And there was given unto him... Much incense. Much incense uh, given to this angel. Come on. That he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar. You see? Those are the prayers that got through. Mm -hmm. When we in sin, your prayer or my prayer not going into them golden sins. It ain't going into that censor. It ain't going no further than the sinner and call and fall right back down. Right? I want, my, I, I want to be able to, to, to say I'm a man of God that can get a prayer through. Mm -hmm. Huh? I want to be a man of God in these last days that can get a prayer through and can say, I know that my prayers are effective. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. Come on, son. What did he say there? That he shall offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. Uh, the golden altar that was before the throne. Come on. What the angel going to do? Verse 4. And the smoke of the incense which and came the, with the prayer. The smoke of those incense. Huh? Hook that preset up, up right back over there with Psalm 141, verse 1 and 2. The incense, come on. Which came with the prayers of the saints. That ascended up along with the prayers of the saints that the angel collected out of that censer. And then did what? Read it out. Ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And then the angel lifts it up unto the Father. And the angel took the censer in verse 5. And filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. Okay, that's good. Right there. So you see? So uh, now go back to Matthew chapter 6. And pick it right back up at verse number 9. 
Matthew chapter 6, we're working on the procedure of prayer tonight, y'all. The procedure of prayer. So we, we, we first must uh, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. We must come into his court with praise. Now, uh, Yeshua is giving us these instructions. Now, let's see if he do the same thing. Let's see if he gives thanks. Let's see if he, if he gives a praise or a sacrifice uh, in prayer. Go get me John, son, chapter 11, and pick it up there at verse number 41. Y'all know John chapter 11 when that brother Lazarus. Uh, had died, the cousin of Yahshua. Yeshua, amen, steps to uh, 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 the place where John had died, having received a word uh, that John had died mm -hmm. two days ago. And Yeshua waits two more days before he shows up. When he shows up, only to be confronted by Mary, huh? And Martha, if you had been here, Yeshua, John would not have died. What you talking about, girl? Mm. Don't you know I am the resurrection? Hallelujah. Mm. And the life? What are you talking about? Show me where they lay him. Pick it up at verse number 41. Verse number 41. Uh-huh. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. Took away the stone where old Lazarus was laid there. Come on, son. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father. And Yeshua lifted up his eyes. What did he say? Said, Father. What did he say? Father. Who did he call on? Said, Father. Uh, come on now. I thank thee that thou hast heard me. That's thanks right there. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. I thank come thee. Come into his praise. Come into his court with praise. Huh? So why did he show up four days later? Because he's going to show forth a miracle that the Father can be glorified. And he says, so that they will know that you have sent me. So when you show up for war, to go to war, huh? Yeshua has already spent much time in prayer. Are y'all listening to this tonight? Hmm? We have to be a people of prayer in these last days. We have to storm heaven's gate with prayers. Are you listening? What did he say there, son? I thank thee that thou hast heard me. You see, let you know he was already praying. And he said, he said, I thank you that what? That thou hast heard me. That you have heard me. Come on. Verse 42. It says what? And I knew that thou heareth me always. Uh oh, he can always get a prayer through. He can always get a prayer through. I'm so glad that he can always get a prayer through. And I want to be just like huh, the Mashiach. Mm. I want to be just like him. I want to make sure I can always get me a prayer through. Because lives are depending on it. Somebody's life depending on it. That you can get a prayer through. Someone's breakthrough is connected to you being able to get a prayer through. That's right. Don't be a lazy bum in these last days in prayer. Huh? Souls on the line. Are you listening to me, sister? You should be an intercessory prayer warrior. My assignment from God Elijah is to raise up ministers of war. Brother, you too? You should be a minister of prayer in these last days. Every last one of us. Don't ever let the devil to get you running so busy you don't have time for prayer. And your prayer should start in the morning, shouldn't it? Mm -hmm. It should start in the morning. Let's go get that, son. Psalm chapter 5. Psalm chapter 5. I want to work on a little bit here. Uh, when should we pray? When should we pray? My God, let's go get Psalm chapter 5 and see what the Father got to say about it over there. We're in the book of Psalms chapter 5 and verse number 1. Come on, verse 5, son. That's not it. Verse, number, no, verse number 1. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Oh, yeah, that's what we want. Verse 1, then I think it goes down to verse 3 or 4. What did he say there? Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider uh -huh. my meditation. And consider my meditation. Give ear unto what? Unto my words. Unto my prayer. Coming up before you now. Read it out. Consider my meditation. Consider my meditation. Read it out. Verse 2. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my king and my God. Hearken unto the voice of my cry. My what king. Say? My king. And my God. Acknowledging who he is. Mm -hmm. 
Huh? Read it out. For unto thee will I pray. Now unto thee, huh? I'm going to pray. I got to pray. I must pray. Read it out. Verse number three, my voice shall thou hear. Now when you going to hear my voice? My voice shall thou hear. When? In, in the morning. When? In the morning. Oh, my goodness. In the morning. You know, you're sure you'll get up early in the morning. Mm -hmm. huh? Still away. Mm -hmm. Get aside from everything and everybody. Mm -hmm. And pray and call on the name of the Father. Huh? If he did it, because he's our example that we must follow. Mm -hmm. Conform to the image of the Son. Well, I got to be to work at 4 o'clock in the morning. And what's your, what's your point? I get up at 3, and I, I get out the door at 2.30. Now, yeah, I, I mean, I get, up at, I get up at 3. I'm out the door at 3.30. I got to be to work at 4. I'm getting up in the middle of the night. And what's your point? It's a sacrifice, remember? I'm trying to help somebody to understand that when you put forth a sacrificial effort, a sacrifice costs you something. It disturbs you. It moves you from a place of comfort, of comfortability. Mm -hmm. it's, that's why it's called a sacrifice. You get up 30 minutes early to pray. Then when you get in your car, you can pray even while you're riding down the road. But see, a sacrifice is going to cost you something. And the Father just loves when we are willing to sacrifice something. Because he sacrificed so much for us. Come on, 55, uh, Psalm 55. Psalm 55 and pick it up at verse 17. Yeah, Psalm 55 and pick it up at verse number 17. And we're going to understand here, this is what uh, uh, Daniel was doing. Daniel praying three times a day, making, making sacrifice, making a prayer sacrifice. Come on, son. Psalms 55, verse 17. All right. Evening and morning and at noon. Uh-oh, did you hear that? In the evening, what else? And morning. And the morning, what else? And at noon. And at noon. Will I pray and cry aloud? You see that? You see that? We need prayer warriors. We need more than just a little two-minute prayer. A, a, a little one-minute prayer. And then you and then you got to pray when you bless your lunch. You didn't even pray over your breakfast. Forgot to pray over that. And then you pray over your over your lunch, and that and that's it. God ain't here. You talk to him no more. See. So, let's go back to Matthew chapter 6. Now, when we pray, let's listen at the, let's listen at the Lord, see what he tells us to do here. So, we, 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 we must give thanks. Prayer is a sacrifice. And we can't have sin in our life if we expect our prayers to make it up to the, to the, uh, uh, to the golden censer. So, the angel can then lift it up uh, to the nose of the Father and be a sweet savor in his nostrils. Right? Come on, son. In Matthew chapter 6. Pick it back up at verse number 9. Verse number 9. All right. After this manner, therefore pray ye, uh -huh. our Father which art in heaven. That's right. Hallowed be thy name. Come on. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Because the Father, uh, you know, Yeshua knew that he wants the Father will, the Father wants his will to be done in the earth as it is in heaven. He knows that. Right? And that should be our prayer. That the will of the Father be done in earth. And if the will of the Father is to be done in earth, well, we're, we're in the earth. And that means sometimes you and me got to go through some trials and some tribulations. You can't say, let your will be done, Father. And think that that doesn't include some trial and some tribulation for us. Let your will be done. Remember Yeshua was in the garden? He said, not my will, but let your will be done. Because he knew it was time to die. Time to be that sacrificial lamb. To be tortured. To be crucified. To be scourged. Mm -hmm. To have the hairs on your face, on your beard snatched out of your face. To have the thorns pressed down on your head. To have the scourging come upon your body. And scourging probably was the worst thing of it all. Because the scourging, when you are scourged, you, you, they, they take a leather strap. A leather handle with straps. Individual little straps. And they have... Uh, iron prongs at the end of them. And